you live should be happiness. It shouldn't be little moments in life and then saying, well, I was happy here and I'm not happy now. Well, at least I was happy then. It shouldn't be like that. It should be, you're always happy. We're inspired by a few different efforts around the world. Um, starting out in the UK with David Cameron's attempt to measure general well-being, but also what they were doing in Canada and something a long-standing effort in Bhutan, where they were basically looking at beyond just economic success at people's well-being and level of, of uh, happiness. Life is full of all kinds of moments, and um, happiness is wonderful, but sadness is also rich and part of it, as is anger, and that happiness, I think it's sort of a mistake to place happiness above all else. A distant voice calls to me, ever hope which underlies All the fear and the worry which runs through this life I know I miss my old ways, I know it's not right To dwell on the past as it drifts out of sight We strive every day uh, to match to one orienting value, and that's to make some of them a great place to work, live, work, play, raise a family and uh, we'll use any form of data to measure our success along those lines and we're hoping that people are happy about some of it as they think about it as a good place to raise their family or to work or to raise their children. Um, so uh, again it's just another important form of data that we use to compare with our other data that we use every day to measure how well we deliver public work services, public safety, how well we do in terms of achievement in education, again to make some of it a desirable place to live. So. It was just a natural progression to measure happiness for us. Remember that evening we stayed out till sunrise. We had created this kind of life ladder, or a ladder of success, or ladder of um, happiness that a lot of different polls use. And this is popular all around the world. Different countries use it as a way of measuring people's own take on their life, their subjective well being. And a drunk sings an old song for the depths of his heart. He says, where has my life gone? When did it fall apart? I recognize what makes me happy, and I continue to, to do that. I know I can be happier, but I'm just discovering myself as a person. I try to be as positive and happy, and it works. In the long run, this is not what I want to do forever, so I wouldn't say I'm 100% happy right now. Baptisms and sacraments are, are wonderful points of happiness for me. Happiness to me is having my family around. It's very important. I mean, there has been a big shift and a much greater interest in happiness in terms of uh, psychology, the science of psychology, than ever before because previously there was a big, much bigger focus on what was broken and how a person was uh, functioning in a pathological way and what was making them sick. And now there is a much greater interest in what are the ingredients that um, lead to wellness. But why that is now, I don't really know the answer. Cynthia de Jesus, I'm 19 years old and I am a current student at Berkeley College of Music and I was born in Boston, Massachusetts. I think happiness comes from yourself. Um, I strongly believe that you, you, other people can't really make you happy unless you're happy with yourself. Pretty much throughout my whole life, I've tried to seek happiness through other people. And I just felt like that was never working because I'd be happy for like one minute and then I'm saying, why am I happy? Do I deserve to be happy? And then I'm thinking, well, these things are going too well for me. Something bad has to happen. So, I don't know. And it's just a hard, that's, it's just a bad thing to think about it that way. Just 
that people don't deserve to be happy. I believe no matter what, everybody deserves to be happy. I'm gonna clear up the mess I made. I really hope that it's not too late. I do uh, feel that that happiness is a present emotion. My name is Will Luera. I'm 36 years old. I live in Chelsea, Massachusetts. I currently work as a full-time artistic director at Improv Boston. Baby date, where we match up babies to go out on dates based on mutual interests. As an improviser, living in the moment is really important. Uh, and responding to the moment and being in control of your emotions right now is very, very important. I don't think happiness is some kind of continuous state. Um, it's, it comes and it goes, it ebbs and it flows. There's moments of happiness um, interspersed with moments of not feeling anything that's so positive. I wanted to go into the theater arts, which I did, but then I met my husband, and that's all I wanted was him. My name is Edith Ann Cutler and everybody calls me sissy. When my husband died, of course, everything changed. Uh, my father was still living, my mother wasn't living. And uh, he was a businessman and he, I said, you gotta help me, I gotta take care of these kids. And my husband had, you know, insurance, but it wasn't really enough for the four kids and me and the house and the mortgage and everything. But I didn't go on a down bender, I, I decided I'd just do something. So we opened um, the first shop in my house, in the living room, in the dining room, in the kitchen. We served coffee every day. People, and people came. And people started to hear about us all over the country. So we got a, sh a shop in Newton, which was great. And all the people came. And when my grandchildren, who were babies, would come, I'd let them, if I had a sale and had bags of yarn in the window, I'd let them play in the window. <laughs> and that was fun. Everybody would stop and knock on the door. I got a big kick out of my grandchildren. And um, they made me happy. They still do. I don't have a lot of carryover from those darker days into the lighter days. Um, there's a lot of sayings that we have in improv that I think are very appropriate to this conversation. We remind ourselves that, you know, the sun's always gonna come up the next morning, right? Like if we had a bad show, we tell ourselves, hey, the sun's still gonna come up tomorrow morning. We also tell ourselves uh, to flush it, right? Like no matter, and sorry to be crude, but no matter how bad it is, you flush it down the toilet and it goes away. And that's the way we treat our improv. The worst of shows, we let go and we move on. We, be, we go back into the present and we enjoy the moment that we're in right now. And I think a lot of that has spilled over from my performance life into my real life. Bren Badekland, age 42, and I'm a full-time artist. I paint. I went to graduate school in the Midwest, and I found people that are really, really, really friendly, so I had a great experience. So when I moved here to teach at the college, I was a Midwesterner, so I smiled at people, waved at them, looked at them straight in the eye and said hi and I didn't get the same response. So for many years while living here, I was not happy because um, in the Philippines, folks are super friendly. In California, they're really friendly and in the Midwest, they're hyper friendly. So I was used to the personal warmth and contact, which I didn't get here. When I first exhibited them, I saw folks here in Boston look at them and they smiled. So I said, well, if I leave them around town, maybe people will smile more often. The note says, this painting is yours if you promise to smile at random people more often. I've envied my friends who are, you know, doctors and teachers and actually, who are actually directly helping society. So I feel like I'm doing that now. Um, in my own small way, um, I'm spreading joy and happiness. As I was raised Catholic all my life, I was baptized as a child, but I spent a little bit of time uh, away from the church and uh, didn't practice the faith for probably about a year. My name is Father Christopher Ewell. I'm a Catholic priest. I, right now, I am the director of the St. Francis Chapel in Boston, Massachusetts. Some of the things I was doing away from practicing the faith, 
on the surface seemed kind of uh, happy and kind of uh, even that would bring a lot of peace and, and even bring joy to a person. It wasn't like it was anything radically immoral or anything, but it just wasn't based on the truth. And so uh, while I was questioning, there was kind of like an anxiety and disturbance inside of me. So, uh, so it wasn't true happiness. It wasn't a real true happiness that I was experiencing. It was kind of a facade. See, again, I'm not that fond of this whole idea of a happy society. I think people can have moments of happiness and deep happiness and joy, but that it's a happy society somehow that just doesn't really, um, it doesn't seem like human nature to me. But I also don't think that it's a reasonable expectation to expect to be happy all the time. And I think in a certain way that's a prescription for unhappiness. My name is Alyssa Uliano. I am 23, I will be 24 in a week. Um, I am a special education teacher at a middle school. We do stuff because we think it's gonna make us happy. Like we're like, we're gonna go get our masters because I wanna be a classroom teacher and I know if I have my master's degree, I'm gonna get more money as a classroom teacher and I know it'll make me happy to be a classroom teacher. But then what ends up happening is you finish the master's program and you're like, this sucks, I'm not happy anymore. Then you get the job as a classroom teacher and now you're like, if only I could get married, like I'll be happy once I have a boyfriend and a classroom to run, like that's what I really wanna do. Then you get the boyfriend and you're like, now what? Now you're like, now I really want to get married and have kids. Like, this guy better propose to me. So, I don't know. I feel like I do these things because I think they're going to make me happy, but I don't think they're going to make me happy right now. I want to go and travel the world, but I don't feel like I necessarily am allowed to do that sometimes with the way society is in America. Because society expects everybody to kind of be perfect or else. Um, they have negativity on them so it's kind of like I'm falling into the crack I'm like kind of living under the influence in a way and I just wish I can just get out of that a little bit more and I'm and I'm really um, surfacing out of that idealistic mindset right now and and once I get there I know I'm gonna be happy and I know it's gonna be very fulfilling. People don't know where things are going I think people are very anxious. A huge number of people are taking antidepressants. And uh, I think many people don't feel well. If you're that poor, that is Having smiles and joy is um, a, it's more like a survival thing because if you really hone in your misery, if you cannot eat, if your kid's about to die, you'd probably kill yourself. And so they channel their energy into, you know, more positive things. Um, so I don't know how genuine the smile versus here, you know, like you were saying, Denmark, um, it's the happiest place. I said, yeah, I mean, they can be kind of relaxed about things because all their needs are met, you know. And like in the Philippines, a lot of folks don't have that luxury. And so having the joy, I think, is like a way for them to survive. It's a good thing, but it's also sad in some ways. I don't think a government can make people happy, certainly. Um, if the government sees to it that there's a safe environment and that um, people are not struggling to meet their basic needs, I think the conditions are right for happiness. But again, you know, it's not like happiness is like a monolithic um, steady state uh, condition. We'll sit down and look at the data really closely and start to think of the policy implications. We've already started to do that to some extent, but once the data is fully analyzed, 
we'll be able to look at it and say, all right, so what is the public trying to tell us? What, are, what do these results say to us? And how can we translate that into policy? And so the government, again, has a, a large part to play in that in terms of really allowing freedom to, to practice religion, a freedom that also takes into account the dignity of every person too. That there, you know, that that's an important aspect of, of freedom. That that uh, every person is respected and given uh, dignity. And without that freedom and without that dignity afforded to people, that certainly uh, is going to affect happiness. I really, I, it's hard to see the government taking further action and making happiness to individuals unless they go like one by one like each person and just talk with them and see what makes them happy. We have happiness groups. Well, you have a group of people and you say, Do you, what kind of things make you happy? Can you share it with us? You share it with me. You, it doesn't make, nothing makes you happy. Then you need to speak to somebody that makes you happy, like you. And, uh, and, and you'd be surprised. This could be seen as fluffy, it could be seen as not pragmatic in the least way. You know, here's this government asking about happiness. It could be seen as kind of big brotherish. But in fact, the response has been overwhelmingly positive where people have said, you know, I'm just happy that somebody's interested, somebody's asking in government. I think meaning is the main goal. And having a life that you conduct in such a way so that when you're on your deathbed and you look back and you say, that was a life well lived. That wouldn't necessarily mean that you were happy all the time, but that somehow you had made some kind of contribution that you thought was meaningful. But happiness as a goal in and of itself, I don't really see that as uh, the point of human existence. Winter of 2004, February, I um, decided to leave paintings um, in Harvard Square because it was a gloomy, snowy, icy day. So I said, hey, I'll spread joy. And I left a painting on a bench in Harvard Square. It was very icy around. And a couple approached it. And the wife had these super neon bright pink shades with pitch black lenses. So I was fearing for her life because I said, she, she probably she cannot see and so slippery. She'll slip and hurt herself. But they picked it up. Didn't hear from them till spring um, of 2004. So she knocks at the door and she hugged me and said it was her first week of the chemotherapy when she found it. So she started crying, I started getting teary eyed. Um, after we hugged, I realized that it, does, it didn't matter at that point if I was making money or not. I needed to um, con con continue this project because I thought it was just a selfish endeavor to like, see more smiles out there for me, but I didn't think at that point that it would make an impact on other people on that level. No matter what, what happens maybe on society that, that might be getting a little less happy, um, the seeds of happiness are still in people. I do think about other people's happiness as well in a way that I'm not putting other people down or making things worse to make myself happy. Like the Bruins just won the Stanley Cup last night. It was unbelievable. Like you've never seen anything like it. Like we won. They were playing. We are the champions in the bar. People were going nuts, clinging beer glasses. Like, and, and I was with people I cared about. It was just cool. Like for me. It really wasn't that they won, it was like being with my friends. There are songs I want to listen to, albums I want to buy, movies I want to watch, people I want to meet, places I want to go, um, and, and all of that combined. And that list is never going to end. I'm, you know, I already realize that I'm going to die with an incomplete list, but keep, you know, every day I keep either moving towards accomplishing another thing on that list or or completing an item on that list. And that's going to just continue to add to my overall overall happiness. The most important part of my job is to improve the quality of life of everyone in this community. And uh, measuring happiness is an important part of that. If they're not happy, we really need to know that. I feel like sort of creepy talking like this, like, um, you know, that I'm just saying all good things, but it's important. Because what good does it do to be down in the dumps and unhappy all the time? You gotta take the good times.
and uh, make them happy and fun.